Hi everybody, my name is Colby Miller and I had chapter 11 which was physical, cognitive, and development and adolescence. Now what I remember most about being a teenager was this is the transitional phase where I thought I was goth. I would paint my nails black, I listened to Marilyn Manson, I dressed in all black. This is also at, where at the age of 16 I got my driver's license. And I also started smoking, which I never would have picked up that habit. I remember going through puberty and where my voice deepened and also getting hair on my armpits, for example. This is also the stage where I thought I knew everything and my parents were wrong and I started questioning their beliefs and their values and their opinions and this is also where I knew that I was a Democrat while my parents were Republican. Um, this is also where I put down the Pokemon cards and I started realizing that, hey, women may not like that I play, I still play with Pokemon cards and so I put them down and, you know, started getting interested in females. So I keep using the word adolescence. What does the word adolescence mean? Adolescence is a Latin word for the word adolescer meaning to grow up. It's a transitional phase of physical or psychological period between childhood and adulthood. It's physically changing from puberty and human growth. And again, this is where I started going through puberty while becoming a teen. I noticed facial hair forming, hair on my armpits and legs, and my voice went from high to low. So I also keep using the word puberty a lot. What does the word puberty mean? It's a collective term for physical changes, and here's some of the things that happen during puberty. It starts in pituitary gland and endocrine gland at the bottom of the hypothalamus base of the brain. The pituitary gland controls all the bodies and other glands and tells the child's adrenal gland to make more adrogen. And bones become more brittle due to more bones being produced. Now, uh, <clears throat> actually studies have shown that this is actually changing, that girls are starting to onset earlier than 7 to 13 and boys from 9 to 14 and I'll talk about that later when I mention the word secular trend. Now to understand puberty you also have to understand these two words which was primary and secondary sex characteristics. The primary sex characteristics are sex organs or gonads, the females are ovaries, uterus, and the vagina, the males are the testes and the penis, while the secondary sex characteristics are other visible changes like height and body. Females would be breast development, male would be voice deepens in the beard growth, and both would be pubic hair. So here are some things that happen to men during puberty. Testicles grow to due to hormone release testosterone. The skin of the scrotum becomes thinner and testicles hang lower. Pubic hair around the penis and scrotum, which is called pubarchy. The penis gets bigger. Body odor and acne due to increased skin oil. Growth spurts. Some diseases or problems men might face at a later age. BPH, rectal dysfunction, prostate cancer, and decline in function. What happens to females during puberty? Females go through puberty earlier than men. Breasts change size and shape. Velarchy. Hair grows on the armpits and around and above the vulva. Hair on legs grow darker and thicker. Body odor and acne. Hips widen, getting ready for birth. Period starts. Menarche. Some diseases are problems that women might face at an older age. Vulval va vaginal atrophy. Walls become thinner and dry. Estrogen that protects the bones decrease sharply when women reach menopause which makes bones brittle, which is osteoporosis. And the bones actually look like honeycombs. So like I said, the word secular trend. What's the blame? They're actually showing that children are starting to go through puberty at an earlier age and here's somewhat of a chart that shows at what age children are starting to actually peak and go through puberty. 
Secular trend is a change that happens in nations when nutrition and health improve. Puberty is starting earlier for boys and girls. Some reasons why it could be. Central precocious puberty. Peripheral precocious puberty. Obesity. Genetics. Race might also be to blame for why children are going through puberty at a faster age. Now there was a pediatrician named James Tanner who invented this scale and it defines development measurements based on external primary and sex and secondary sex characteristics and it would show him what uh, stage you might be going through in puberty and actually this scale that you're seeing right now actually kind of went under fire in some case studies saying that it may not be true and he might he actually got uh, charged for child pornography so like I said I'm gonna touch base on some of the systems of going through puberty because this chapter was just too broad to just narrow it down to one section now the nervous system during puberty at the ages of 13 and 15, the cerebral cortex becomes a thicker and neuronal pathways become more efficient. Most growth and energy spurts take place in parts of the brain that control spatial perception and motor functions. The prefrontal cortex, the frontal lobe that is directly behind the forehead, changes by maturing rapidly. The prefrontal cortex is responsible for re executive processing information processing skills that involve devising and carrying out strategies for remembering and solving problems the prefrontal cortex forms new synapses prior to puberty the brain prunes away from the least efficient of the synapses it continues to do this until the mid 20s due to the brain doing this the mid adolescent teenagers executive processing skills far exceed those to the middle childhood at the age of 17 until early adulthood, another growth spurt happens. This time, the frontal lobes of the prefrontal cortex are developing. Due to this lobe dealing with logic and planning, it is not supervising or not surprising that older teens are different from younger teens in how they deal with problems that use these cognitive functions. And it's like I mentioned here, some of the thing here's some of the parts of your brain. The thalamus, the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, which is a pea size. But it's funny that this little pea size thing controls all of your endocrine system. Like I just mentioned, the pituitary gland in your endocrine system. <clears throat> the pituitary gland is no bigger than a pea. It's located beneath the base of the brain, just beneath the hypothalamus. The pituitary gland is split into two lobes, the anterior lobe and the posterior lobe. The anterior lobe regulates the activity of the thyroid, adrenals, and reproductive glands. It produces hormones such as HDH, or human growth hormones, which stimulates growth of bones and other tissues. Oxytocin, and which I'll mention later, which has to deal with the stretching of the cervix it also helps release prolactin and the pituitary gland also releases endorphins and controls ovulation and menstrual cycles in women now the posterior lobe releases oxytocin and vas vasopressin again oxytocin it plays a role in social bonding, sexual reproduction in both sexes during and after childbirth. Oxytocin is released into the bloodstream as a hormone in response to stretching of the cervix and uterus during labor with stimulation of nipples and breastfeeding. The pituitary glands releases endorphins, like I said, and controls ovulation and menstrual cycles in women. Now the skeletal system during puberty. Bone growth is increased due to increased sex hormones. If an adolescent is lacking any of these hormones, it could be harder to reach a high peak bone mass. Skeletal mass approximately doubles at the end of adolescence. 
Now, obviously, there was more, you know, I, I, I would run out of time. I would, you know, I could sit here and tell you about every single system, but <clears throat> adolescents with self, low self-esteem might have some of these problems due to the changing of your brain. And the book also mentions these things like anorexia nervosa, an eating disorder in which people have a fear of gaining weight and become dangerously thin. Bulimia, an eating di disorder that involves binging on food and then followed by purging. Binge eating disorder, recurrent episodes of eating large mass amounts of food and then feeling shame, distress, and guilt afterwards. Depression, which I still suffer from. It's a mental illness that causes persistent feeling of sadness and loss of interest. Now, now this was actually shocking to read that 90% of those of eating disorders are between the ages of 12 and 25 years old. That's really sad. While 60% of elementary school girls the ages 6 to 12 are concerned about their body weight or becoming fat. And here's a couple of charts that I found on the internet and I thought that they were, you know, kind of beneficial to my PowerPoint. <clears throat> Again, I could have went through every single body system, but I wouldn't want to bore you guys to death because there was just so much to touch base on. And I really enjoyed this chapter and I really hope that you guys enjoyed my PowerPoint. Thank you very much.